Hey everybody, it's Ia Patsy and I am doing the Love Bite for the sign of Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the time period between mid-June and mid-July 2018. So I hope everybody's doing well and let's get started with this reading. So the first um, energy that came for you, Aries, was Loki. Play. Okay, and the second energy that came for you today was Lakshmi, prosperity. Lakshmi, prosperity. So play and prosperity. Okay, so the cards that we're um, looking at here are from the gods and titans and sirens and uh, goddesses deck, and that's by Stacey DeMarco and uh, Jimmy Manton. So let's see what Loki is talking about. Loki says, look at the lighter side of a situation. Rediscover your sense of humor and play. <coughs> <coughs> so, could be talking about you needing to lighten up. Um, let's see. It's a great talent to be able to find humor in any circumstance. Should Loki come up for you, look to the lighter side of the situation. There's always one. Ask yourself, when was the last time that I actually laughed and played or did something downright silly? There is such freedom in this. Okay, so. There might be something going on around you right now, Aries, that is causing you to be very serious and sullen. Or maybe you're overthinking a situation. Or maybe you have been so dedicated to your spirituality or to responsibilities of family and home that maybe you're failing to see the humor in the entire thing. Maybe what this is saying that maybe instead of being sad about how something isn't working out or disappointed in something that really was a disappointment to you, perhaps if you just look at look at it as, let's see. Okay, for example, I had a situation years ago where this guy took me out to dinner uh, and I let him pick me up and we went to uh, this restaurant and uh, the gentleman brought the bill, you know, the waiter brought over the menu and, you know, started to take my order. And after I ordered, the guy um, said all he wanted was an orange uh, soda. And so the waiter and I looked at each other and I looked at him and the waiter was, sir, are you sure? And he's like, yes. And so when he walked away, I said, what's the matter? He said, well, I forgot my wallet. <laughs> so now, here I am. I have my own car. I could have at least met him there. And I usually wouldn't do that because it wasn't like this was a, a person I dated regularly. This was like a first date type of thing. And so I allowed him to pick me up at my place and, you know, take me to the restaurant. And so I ordered... You know, the, the food came, I had already ordered it, and I paid for for it. I paid for everything, including his soda. And then I just left. I didn't even wait for him to drive me home. And I got home, I think I took a cab home, and I just laughed at myself, because like, this is what you get. You know better than that. You know you're not supposed to go nowhere without your own. And I just tried to find humor in it so that I just, you know, it's something small like that. But what I'm saying is that when you find yourself in these situations, instead of getting angry and upset or showing you out and, you know, or embarrassing yourself or someone else, try to find, you know, find the humor in it. You know, um, just some things are not even worth getting upset about. They're just things that should happen, you know? And sometimes we make things more... We give, we give negativity more energy than it actually deserves. 
So maybe there is a situation that has you confused or down or upset or disappointed. And so maybe you can find a way to find the humor in it, all right? Whether it's to laugh at yourself or to laugh at the other people that are involved in it. So perhaps that's the, um, the advice to you, all right? The second card that came for you, Lakshmi. This says prosperity. Financial aspects come to the foreplay, to the forefront. Your prosperity will improve. You can be physically and spiritually rich. Ethics are necessary for real success. So, you know, when we talk about abundance and prosperity, you know, Usually, I guess, the feeling that we have is that, oh, some money is coming to us. We're coming into some financial windfall or, or something. Somebody's going to pay us back or, you know, whatever. So maybe what it's saying is that the prosperity is not financial, but spiritual prosperity. Okay? And that perhaps ethics, perhaps the morals or morality that you have maybe found along the way, maybe in this same situation, is what is the real success. So maybe you were looking at a situation that had been, that you've been told was gonna to bring you abundance or prosperity, and maybe really what you got was spiritual prosperity and um, the weight of your ethics, your morality, maybe that's the abundance and not the financial. And so maybe they're letting you know, you know, maybe you should find a humor in that, in that they, you kind of set yourself up thinking that you were gonna hit the lottery when actually the lottery that you hit was a spiritual lottery, that you found something different, something new, something abundant about your your uh, relationship with the divine, that you found that the abundance was your spiritual team, that you were protected and being bolstered and being supported by the divine, by your ancestors, um, by friends and family around you. Maybe your richness is not material, or maybe it's more spiritual and um, the, the, the happiness of having love and in your life, people who love you and who support you, maybe that's your abundance rather than financial abundance. And so maybe they're letting you know that don't uh, be disappointed if you find out that the prosperity that you have acquired is not dollar amount, it's love. It's being supported, being protected, and maybe that's the way that you should go forth or what you should be expecting or be ready to expect it not to be financial, but to be spiritual wealth. Okay, that's could be what this is. It could be about a fresh start, something coming towards you that is not necessarily measured in dollars and cents. It could be saying that you are going to come into some prosperity. Maybe when you're gambling, maybe that's what the play is. Maybe the play is gonna be the thing that brings you the prosperity. So it could be a lottery, okay? But I'm saying, I'm thinking that what they're trying to tell you is to not be so serious, lighten up, it's summertime, all right? Maybe prosperity is coming towards you, but, and it could be the financial prosperity that you have been expecting or hoping for, or praying for, or seeking. But in the meantime, until it gets to you, maybe it's saying that you need to take your mind off of it, you know, let go and let God handle it and do other things, you know, things that are um, less 
burdensome, all right? Um, don't be bogged down by worries about finances and prosperity. Or it could be that you are gonna come into some prosperity that's gonna give you the opportunity to play. Maybe you'll be going on vacation. But all I'm saying is, <sighs> lighten up. Enjoy the, the whatever it is. Be open to whatever abundance is coming, okay? Whether it be in luck or in love. So, we got four of the uh, Romance Angel Oracle cards for you for your love bite. And Aries, the first card here is true love. This is the romance of a lifetime. The next card that came for you was chemistry. There is a strong magnetic attraction here. Next card from the Romance Angels by Doreen Virtue is give your relationship a chance. Work on your partnership. And the next is free yourself. It's time to take back control of your life. So, perhaps the message here is that you have been working maybe too hard. Maybe you have been focusing too hard on your finances, all right? And that that is causing you to maybe um, not spend as much time as you should enjoying the relationship, enjoying the person that is there and that has been there with you, okay? Maybe your focus on your finances and your abundance and your quest and chasing the dollar has caused you to lose control or at least lose perspective on what is important. And they're reminding you that you and the person that you're interested in or your mate or your partner, you have chemistry and you have true love. And that maybe you need to open up your mind and free yourself from focusing on abundance and finances and rather give your relationship a chance by lightening up. All right, maybe spend some money doing something fun. All right, maybe you've been a little tight wadded. All right, and you're holding on, and maybe they're tell holding on to money. Maybe they're ex um, advising you to. Free it up, you know. You can't you, you can't get with a closed fist all the time, you know. It's like your hands have to be open. You have to be your hands have to be open to give and to receive. That might be for somebody. <laughs> okay. So got two oracle cards from you also from the Journey of Love cards by Alana. Fairchild Rasuli and Richard Cohen. And the first card that we got was the number 48, the man of the earth and woman of the sky. 48, man of the earth and woman of the sky. So four plus eight is 12 and one and two is three. So it's a message from the divine for you. Let's see what that's talking about 48 okay woman of the man of the earth woman of the sky I see myself in you and you and me we may seem to be so different and sometimes yet so similar even beyond this, I know deep within that we are one. I can lose myself in your light and receive your light with my body. I can witness the darkness of your shadow and enter 
into it with my compassion. I find the divine in our connection, letting go of what I thought I was. I can be broken apart to become as one with you, even if for a second. And I know the divine more intimately than ever before. Our passion leads us to each other, and in each other we find our true selves. This oracle brings you a message of a sacred relationship that leads to divine understanding and experience. You're being opened up to a sacred relationship, either in your current relationship or one that is on its way to you. In a human relationship and a divine relationship with the heavenly beloved. Mm. Know that you are worthy of it and keep a light of gentle hope and respect kindling in your heart as you anticipate the union with your beloved. Know that even in it's dark, know that even when it is dark, when it challenges you, there is a sacredness unfolding. The love of the divine wants to reach us not only in our happiness, but also, perhaps more so, in our darker side. Let it reach for you through your relatedness with another and do not be afraid to be broken and open for in that cracking of what you thought you were, you shall begin to know what you are, which is heaven on earth. Okay, so allow yourself to be open to this experience that may be a little frightening and a little off-putting. It's gonna take you out of your comfort zone. And it's telling you to give that a chance, to give yourself a chance and recognize that all of this, all this uncertainty may be part of the journey to bring you closer to the person that you love and that you're destined to be with. The second energy, the second oracle came from the Sacred Rebels Oracle, and that's also by Alana Fairchild. And the card here is Collaborative Dreaming. Number 28, Collaborative Dreaming. Two and eight is 10, so 10 reduces to one, so this is about your individuality. But collaboration is uh, coming together, right? Acting with other people, right? Joining energies. So let's see what that is about. Collaborative dreaming. Your heart is big enough to dream not only for yourself, but for a new humanity. Imagine a world that is healed with respect, understanding, and with community that fosters life. Even your dreams that relate to you alone will contribute positively to the greater good because that is the nature of your heart. Your heart naturally and intelligently cooperates in a grand scheme of loving creativity, working to heal the hearts of the world. The heart creates win-win situations that benefit the individual and the collective. You're being asked to honor your growing desire to co-create with conscious and like-minded people. Your collaborative dreaming is a heart-inspired win-win, bringing mutual enhancement to yourself and others. The heart wants to love and be loved. Working with others creatively is a way to allow the heart to grow. It is a chance for you to learn how to honor yourself and others and to find ways to live and let live simply by growing and strengthening your active trust in your heart's guidance. Creative endeavors, particularly involving groups, can bring up unresolved issues about being valid, valued or heard or capable. They can also trigger disputes about taking responsibility 
or inflame insecurities about being cast into unfamiliar roles of leadership or having to follow. This might happen to you, for others are all involved. This may happen for you, for others, or for everyone involved. The stronger the creative energy that flows, the more likely that triggering will take place. It is the nature of creative energy to move in all directions. It doesn't just want to grow one project. Everything that comes into contact with it will grow. That means that the art and the artist are in the process of creating. This can be smooth, but it is more likely to be rough sailing, at least sometimes. This is not a sign that something isn't working, far from it. It's more usually a sign that growth is happening and that you are feeling growing pains. You're being asked to bear the rough patches that can happen when you work creatively with others. Ideas might clash and there can be friction, particularly if, if you have different ways of working. Sometimes big dreams need more fire to ignite them into reality. More fire might require more friction along the creative path. It's not meant to be a permanent condition. It's just an aspect of the creative process from which you can learn something useful. Your guidance is to embrace any experiences of friction or tension within yourself or as you work with another with compassion, detachment, and tolerance. This oracle is guiding you to stay in your integrity. Honor what you feel and remember why you were chosen to open up to group endeavors in the first place, especially if the group involvement becomes complex or challenging. Call on unconditional love each day and evening. It only takes a moment to do. I call on unconditional love. Please help and guide me in this project. You are going through this experience or will be in the near future because you are part of a new creative learning program for humanity. This learning program is taking place at a spiritual level and it requires highly individualistic and creative people to learn to work with each other without compromising who they are in order to reach a common creative goal. It is wonderful. And it's important and challenging, creative and spiritual work. You need a strong sense of self to be able to engage in the process and not lose your voice during your journey. You need to be strong enough to be flexible and know when to bend. You need to intuit what is going to be a good-hearted, inspired sacrifice for the greater good and when you need to stay true to your own voice for the greater good. Only the heart can guide you on these matters and others may not always agree with your instincts and vice versa. This is part of the challenge of staying present so that the friction created can be channeled into creative energy rather than in lost emotional turmoil. This oracle brings a message to those of you that are involved in a group and are struggling over whether to continue or let it go and move on. You're asked to trust your heart and not to allow any group to become more powerful than the wisdom of your heart always allow the sacred rebel within you to question authority is it love and what well, is it a loving and wise authority or is it coming from a place of fear-based control look to your heart's wisdom to discern whether your involvement in a group is healthy or not sometimes a group can only receive so much of your energy before it's time to move on Sometimes a group is not receiving us at all, but we feel that we are meant to be a guiding hand in it for a period of time before our heart urges us to let go. Ask for guidance through the healing process and trust in the feelings that become clear to you over time. 
you will know what to do and you must trust your own inner voice above all other. So, there is a healing process that goes along with um, breaking away from a group or at least asking for guidance. Imagine a chain of paper dolls all connected, forming a circle. Imagine that the circular chain of paper dolls can be filled with a beautiful golden light which begins in the heart of each paper doll. The light shines out and shimmers, making the paper dolls radiant, shiny, and golden. Imagine a feeling of love, connection, help, and goodwill shining with the golden light. Now stay with that image or feeling as long as it feels good for you. Then simply open your eyes and you have completed your healing process. So, perhaps there's a group that is connected to you, maybe, maybe people that you work with. Or a group that you may be con, um, connected to, maybe a fraternal organization. Maybe that's the, the part of the prosperity part of it, because there's networking and business co business connections, and a lot of fraternal sorority, you know, type of organizations. And so maybe this is telling you to take a look at that situation, take a look at that group, and decide whether or not it's run its course or whether or not there's still anything that you have to add to this, this effort or is it adding anything to you or is it taking something from you? So maybe that's what it is. The people that you play with, the group that you belong to. Maybe they're asking you during this period of time between now and the mid of middle of July is to take a look at those things, those places, the places that you play, the, the groups that you hang out with, that may be networking, okay? Um, maybe it's time for you to take a look at that and see whether or not this is something that you are involved in because you truly love it, or is it something that you just feel obligated to? maybe that's the free freeing yourself that you have to check into maybe that's the chemistry all right and maybe the relationship that you want that they want you to give a chance to is your relationship with yourself and to the divine and maybe this involvement in this social group takes your focus off of yourself and your spiritual work well, Aries, that's your love bite for the time period between now and the middle of July. I hope it resonated with you, and I'll be speaking to you all very soon. Thank you, and I say.